The chair is authorized to <clears throat> declare recesses of the committee at any time. We welcome everyone to this morning's hearing on oversight of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and I'll begin by recognizing myself for an opening statement. Thank you, Director Ray, for appearing for your first time in front of this committee, and thank you for your service to our country in your new position. There is much to discuss today, and we look forward to your answers. The President recently tweeted that the FBI is in tatters. While some will take umbrage with President Trump's assertion, it does appear to me that, at the very least, the FBI's reputation as an impartial, non-political agency has been called into question recently. We cannot afford for the FBI, which has traditionally been dubbed the premier law enforcement agency in the world, to become tainted by politicization or the perception of a lack of even-handedness. Questions regarding the FBI's impartiality first came to light under the Obama administration surrounding the handling of the investigation into the Clinton email server scandal. You, Director Ray, have a unique opportunity to repair the damage of the reputation of the FBI, and we encourage you in the strongest terms to do so. Director Comey's decision to weigh in on the fate of the investigation into the mishandling of classified emails by former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was one that brought criticism to the Bureau from all sides. The FBI's decision to recommend no charges against former, the former Secretary or anyone connected to her continues to raise serious concerns that our nation's system of justice applies differently to the rich, powerful, and well-connected than to everyone else. Many on this committee have repeatedly called on Attorney General Sessions and Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein to name a second special counsel to review the voluminous, unresolved and perceived improprieties with regard to, formal, to normal FBI and DOJ investigatory practice that arose during the Clinton email investigation. Despite our requests, the Department has not appointed a second special counsel. While we still request the appointment of a second special counsel, we have now also opened our own joint investigation with the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee to review FBI and DOJ's handling of that investigation. The Attorney General has recently committed to provide us relevant documents. And I hope to hear directly from you that you will ensure your agency provides a fulsome response of documents to enable unimpeded congressional oversight. Even more recently, reports on the bias of some of the career agents and lawyers on current special counsel Mueller's team are also deeply troubling to a system of blind and equal justice. Investigations must not be tainted by individuals imposing their own personal political opinions. We do not know the magnitude of this insider bias on Mr. Mueller's team, nor do we have a clear understanding of the full magnitude of bias reflected in the Russia investigation and prior Clinton email investigation. One thing is clear, though. It is absolutely unacceptable for FBI employees to permit their own political predilections to contaminate any investigation. Even the appearance of impropriety will devastate the FBI's reputation. We hope to hear from you today <coughs> uh, about an action plan for making sure this never happens again, that individuals are held accountable, and whether you plan to reevaluate prior decisions in light of the prejudice shown by officials in integral roles on past and ongoing investigations. Concerning substantive legislative measures, we find ourselves only weeks before a critical program for our national security expires, FISA Section 702. This committee passed on an overwhelmingly bipartisan basis a reauthorization of Section 702 that maintains the integrity of the program while protecting cherished civil liberties. We ensure that the FBI is not hindered by having, a, having to obtain a warrant before performing a search for information that the agency has inside its databases. However, we also put in place protections to ensure that law enforcement cannot shortcut American civil liberties by reading Americans' emails without a warrant when looking for evidence of run-of-the-mill crimes. 
This committee's legislation struck a balance that will hope that will promote national security and civil liberties. So I hope to hear from you that you will work with us to make any perfecting changes to the legislation so that Section 702 can be reauthorized on time. Needless violence on the home front is also a concern for all Americans who value and expect safety and security as they go about their day-to-day -day lives. We have seen horrific violence in the past year, including the worst mass, worst mass shooting in U.S. history. Violence has hit this very body when our <coughs> colleague Congressman Scalise and others were shot. We also see many of our major cities stricken by daily murders and excessive violence. Is this the new normal? I am unwilling to accept that. While we have disagreements over policy for addressing this violence, we can all agree that it is essentially it is existentially important for us to understand and address the underlying causes. If we neglect this duty, we do a disservice for generations to come. Director Ray, in addition to punishing individuals who have already committed criminal acts, I hope the FBI is also committed to crime prevention initiatives. I'm interested to know <clears throat> what steps federal law enforcement is taking to address the underlying causes of violence and whether Congress can offer any additional resources to ensure that we can faithfully say that we have done what we can to battle gratuitous violence in all of its forms. I believe that this committee's criminal justice reform legislation will help address these problems, including helping to rehabilitate offenders so that they can become productive members of society once released. Notwithstanding the question of the impartiality and independence of the FBI, I am often astounded by the efforts that the men and women of the FBI contribute on a daily basis toward keeping our country safe from foreign and domestic threats. There are many successes that never come the light, that never see the light of day for which the FBI cannot receive public credit due to the sensitized methods and operations. We are truly grateful and hope that the line agents, analysts, and support staff of the FBI know that their jobs are sincerely appreciated and greatly valued. Again, Director Ray, thank you for appearing today. And I'll now yield to the ranking member of the committee, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome to the House Judiciary Committee, Director Ray. Earlier this week, in a message to your agents and employees, you gave us your vision of what the FBI is supposed to be. Quote, we find ourselves under the microscope each and every day, and rightfully so. We do hard work for a living. We are entrusted with protecting the American people and upholding the Constitution and laws of the United States. Because of the importance of our mission, we are also entrusted with great power, and we should expect and welcome people asking tough questions about how we use that power. That goes with a job and always has, unquote, from your statement. I appreciate that sentiment, but it cannot be a coincidence that you sent this message to your agents just hours after President Trump launched an online tantrum aimed largely at the Bureau as an institution and at individual agents. Early Saturday morning, the President tweeted, quote, so General Flynn lies to the FBI and his life destroyed, while crooked Hillary lies many times and nothing happens to her? Rigged system or just a double standard? Question mark, unquote. He went on, after years of Comey, with the phony and dishonest Clinton investigation running the FBI, its reputation is in tatters, worse than history. These outbursts exemplify two key characteristics of the administration, a cheapening and coarsening of our dialogue and baseless but entirely predictable political attacks against Hillary Clinton, political opponents, the Department of Justice, and the FBI. I fear that this demeaning language has infected much of our work here on this committee. And I suspect, Mr. Director, that many of my Republican colleagues will take a similar approach in attempting to shift the conversation away from questions they have largely ignored, like obstruction of justice, election security, and the rise in hate crimes. Indeed, I predict that these attacks on the FBI will grow louder and more brazen as the special counsel does his work and the walls close in around the president and evidence of his obstruction and other misdeeds becomes more apparent. In this moment, Director Ray, your responsibility is not only to defend the Bureau, but to push back against the President when he is clearly wrong, both on the facts and as a matter of principle. 
When he says, quote, the FBI person really reports directly to the President of the United States, unquote, it is your job to tell him that the director of the FBI has reported to, to the Attorney General since the founding of the Bureau and that presidents should not comment on pending cases. When he claims that you should focus on, quote, crooked Hillary, unquote, instead of his closest associates, or when my colleagues argue for a new special counsel to do the same, it is your responsibility to remind us that absent sufficient evidence of a crime, there is no investigation to which a special counsel can be assigned. And when he tells you that you need to, quote, clean house, that your agents are, quote, phony and dishonest, and that your, quote, reputation or the reputation of the Bureau is in tatters, and, quote, the worst in history, you should do more than send a private email to your employees. Your job then is to stand up to the President of the United States. As former Acting Attorney General Sally Yates has said, the only thing in tatters is the President's respect for the rule of law. The dedicated men and women of the FBI deserve better. Or as former Attorney General Eric Holder said, you'll find integrity and honesty at FBI headquarters and not at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue right now. Or as Thomas O'Connor, president of the FBI Agents Association said, the FBI continues to be the premier law enforcement agency in the world. FBI agents are dedicated to their mission. Suggesting otherwise is simply false, unquote. I'm curious if you think their defense of the Bureau is wrong or misplaced, and I hope you will address the matter in your testimony today. Your job requires you to have the courage in these circumstances to stand up to the president. That responsibility is far more than a matter of politics. There are, really, there are real consequences for allowing the president to continue his attacks on the FBI and to continue unchecked in this manner. For example, FBI statistics released last month show a marked increase in the rise of hate crimes in the United States. Your data indicate 6,121 hate crimes against, seven, against 7,615 victims last year alone. Last week, about wrote to me and to Chairman Goodlatte asking us to, quote, convene immediate hearings to determine what can be done to stem the tide, unquote, of this violence. I agree completely. This committee should address the matter without delay. And I ask that the letter I have be made a part of the record. Without objection, it will be made a part of the record. Thank you. I am certain that more than one factor is to blame for this rise in violence. But I cannot help but look to a president who has tacitly and sometimes explicitly created an environment that is more hostile to the most vulnerable among us. As a candidate, he denigrated women, characterized immigrants as rapists, and openly mocked the disabled. As president, he cracked a Pocahontas joke at a ceremony honoring the contributions of Native Americans in combat defending this country, circulated unverified anti-Muslim videos produced by far-right fascist extremists in Great Britain, and asked us to remember the, very, the, quote, very fine people, unquote, among the racists and white nationalists at Charlottesville. According to reports, he has even resurrected the question of President Obama's birthplace, a pernicious racist lie from the start. We are looking for leaders who have the moral, who can supply some moral authority to lead this country. I hope you will be among them, Director Ray. I look forward to your testimony today. I thank the chairman. I yield back. Chair, thanks, gentlemen. We welcome our distinguished witness. And if you'll please rise, I'll begin by swearing you in. Do you swear that the testimony that you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you very much. Let the record show that the witness answered the affirmative.